Hi, my name is Linda. Yes. I'm calling from Chief Glenda Care's office. You left a voicemail for him. I did, yeah. Can I ask what it's regarding? It's the lines in the sky oh. from, from airplanes. Oh, okay. Lines in the sky. And what are they from? Air airplanes. You know what I heard helps? What? Tin foil on your windows. What? Tin foil on your windows. Really? Truly. I have heard by a bunch of people that that helps. How does that help? Uh, that I don't know. It's a little too technical for me. Tin foil on your window? Yeah, to cover them up. Like even your car window? Well, no, because you need to look out of those to drive. But you're home. So I'm going to ask you to do one other thing, and that is question authority. So today I want to talk about uh, police officers and their families. Uh, more so their families and not just police officers that would be military officers it would be any politician it would be any government employee but however it would, it's especially somebody with a gun and a badge <clears throat> and the reason why I want to talk about people with guns and badges is because of the chemtrail spraying that's been going on overhead now for years I'm sure many of you have noticed that there's been no five days in a row of nothing but clear blue sky and sun. In fact, almost every day for the last two years, there's been something in the sky other than blue sky and sun, and that would either be clouds for rain, snow, or some kind of chemical clouds, or some kind of chemtrails, or some kind of haze. It's not been one full day at all of blue sky and sun for at least two years now and there are pictures to verify that. Th there may have been days where we've had maybe eight hours of nearly just blue sky and sun and seemingly nothing else, but then if you paid attention the whole day, you will see a chemtrail or some cloud come in. And so we've never had a full day of blue sky and sun, and that's impossible because just the fact that you have high-pressure systems coming in and leaving, uh, whenever you have a high-pressure system, you should have days Maybe, maybe even five days of blue sky and sun. And there's no way that we could not have had a high-pressure system in two years. So there's something really wrong going on, and everybody is trying to spread the word about chemtrails to get it to stop. And the police have been informed, as well as the military and other agencies have been informed, and there's been nothing but um, apathy or ridicule or, or something like that but nothing to the effect of taking it seriously because they just maybe are paid to not take this seriously. So now, my intent here is I want to talk to you, the family member, who has a mother or father or a, or, or a grandparent or something like that that goes to work with a gun and a badge. Um, and I want to talk to the friends of those who go to work with a gun and a badge. I don't want to talk to the gun and the badge person just yet. We've tried to reach them and we get um, sporadic results, um, nothing taken seriously. So if your father is a cop, if your mother is a cop, if your brother is a cop, if your sister is a cop, if your son or daughter is a cop, uh, we need to talk to you. We need you to listen. Um, the chemtrail spraying that's been going on for a number of years now is uh, getting out of hand. There's almost no sun anymore. When I say no sun, I mean no clear blue sky and sun. No five-day high-pressure zones anymore. There's something going on, and it has to do with the spray coming out of aircraft, and they are not regular jet emissions. And there's a reason why they're not regular jet emissions. It's because regular commercial aircraft use high bypass turbofan jet engines. And those are nothing but huge spinning blades powered by a turbine that's extremely small. The amount of thrust coming from a high bypass turbofan jet engine is about 85 to 90 percent thrust. So, meaning you basically have an Everglades airboat pushing air out the back, causing propulsion for these huge heavy aircraft. And also, when you're up at altitude, 
you cannot get any form of a trail up at altitude of 40,000 feet or so because the temperature is so cold and the relative humidity is so low, near 0%, that any kind of trail, if it were to form, using that high bypass fan, pushing whatever exhaust is out the back of the actual turbine engine, would be rapidly diffused in a second very quickly. You would never see any trail ever. And so there's no way to get any kind of saturation of a, a long trail. Just the same as if you would, you know, on a cold winter day like today, you don't see trails coming from everybody's exhaust vent from the chimneys or their roof. Everybody's furnace is on. You don't see a trail from everyone's furnace miles and miles and miles and miles long across the city. That's, and, and what's even more important on that is that the relative humidity is actually higher at lower elevations. So there is a better chance of saturation and a trail forming. But as you can see, it doesn't even happen, even on the most humid days, and it's really cold. <clears throat> so, can I interrupt for a second? Sure. I have a house right in front of me. Um, I'm up on a hill. I'm looking at mm. the glass doors of my kitchen. Mm. And there is a furnace with um, condensation coming out at the top, and it dissipates. It comes out, and it, it disappears almost instantly. Yes, yeah, that's my point. And the same thing would be true of when you and I walk down the street on a very cold day. And the last couple of days, it's been very cold. Uh, you would see a condensation trail, if that was the case, you know, for miles long as you walk down the street. Uh, and you don't see that. It's gone in, in a second or so. And same with automobiles. When an automobile is running down the street, you should see, according to those who say those are contrails in the sky, which they're not contrails, those are chemtrails, if you're driving a car in a very cold day, you you should see trails behind the car that just never leave and r for miles and miles and miles. So we're talking to to you, the son of a police officer. We're talking to you, the daughter of a police officer, the mother of a police officer, the father of a police officer. We need to talk to you because uh, your son or daughter, who's a police officer with a gun and a badge is not protecting the public from the chemical spraying by aircraft that, that's been going on for years now. Um, the only things that can linger the way they are are chemicals. And th there's a number of different ways of getting chemicals in aircraft and getting them out of the aircraft. And uh, I, I guess I'll talk about that right now. Uh, so again, I, I'm speaking to the family members and the friends of people who go to work with guns and badges. Okay, I don't really want to talk to the people with guns and badges. We've done enough of that. We need to talk to the friends and family members of those who go to work with guns and badges. Okay, who, when you say that we've done enough of that, what do you mean by that? We've well, done enough talking to the people with guns and badges. Well, I know myself. I know myself. I've, sp I've spoken to police officers of d varying d um, jurisdictions. Um, others have done the same. Uh, others have gone to environmental people as well, who the police have told us to go to. Um, even the President of the United States has been gone to, the Prime Minister of Canada has been gone to, the Attorney, uh, the, uh, I believe the, uh, um, the, the Queen's right-hand man in Canada, right-hand woman, um, uh, Governor General has been approached. Everybody that we can think of has been approached on the issue of chemtrail spraying. Including weather reporters. Including uh, weather uh, reporters. Uh, I can tell you in Hamilton, uh, the people in Ham the weather specialists in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, have been approached about chemtrails, and uh, they're all mum. Everybody's quiet on the topic. They'll either say they're contrails or they just won't even talk about it. And what I'm going to sh uh, show in this video, too, is some audio recordings of just the, the greatest of disrespect when you approach the police chief's office or other police officers, etc. Um, and uh, I, I also have a recording here supplied to me by another person who's been severely persistent on the American side, uh, basically getting the hint that there's nobody you can contact with regards to the the chemtrails or the contrails. There's nobody. 
nobody will take the call. So this is another reason why I'm contacting you, the son of a police officer, the daughter of a police officer, the mother of a police officer, the father of a police officer, the friend of a police officer, the brother and sister of a police officer. We need to talk, we need, we need you to hear us. We have been trying to reach your loved one and through their pay and through their commands they've been ignoring our complaints. Um, one should never, ever, ever um, go to a police officer and have their complaint ignored. It's just not right. It's not the thing to do. And when you go up to a cop and you say, you know, is it against the law for a cop to not take a report, they, they, will, they won't even understand what you're talking about. What do you mean not take a report? They have to listen to everything come in and then deal with it, right? So with the issue of chemtrails, it's not the case at all. They won't hear it or they'll ask you if you're on medications or seeing a psychiatrist, etc., etc. So again, now, we don't want to talk to police officers here right now. I mean, you know, fine if you're a family member. You can uh, tell, you know, your loved, your loved officer <clears throat> uh, to listen to this. Uh, we've tried to reach them. And we want you, the family members and the friends, uh, to know we've we've tried to reach police officers uh, of many different forms, whether that be, for example, a police officer, that could be a provincial police, that could be a federal police like the RCMP, that could be um, a sheriff, that could be a state trooper, that could be CIA, that could be FBI. We're, I'm telling you now, all of these people have been approached, and there's been no act towards stopping the spraying of chemtrails. Okay, I would just like to add, that I uh, have it open in front of me. It was posted on Facebook. Elite think tank admits to ongoing climate engineering experiments. Mm -hmm. And the reason I bring that up is because there is ample, ample, ample evidence that we are being sprayed by cockroaches with these chemicals that are that are they're not healthy. And so basically, <coughs> what I'd like to say is that our silence is permission. Um, for life to be destroyed instead of life being protected, and that. Um, in New York, Long Island, New York, there was recently a public hearing, um, a legislation to ban chemtrails. It got huge public support. And so the time for talking about, worrying about, taking more pictures and sharing them of chemtrails in the sky, which are undeniable, is the time for that is, 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 has come, is, is, is over. Yes. And it's time for us to take some action. Yes. And that's why we're doing this um, video and also uh, I'm sure you were going to mention this but just for people who want to go and check out right now to see how valid this is all the technical information the science the images everything links videos you could possibly ask for to assure yourself to con to can prove to yourself that chemtrails are real and that they're damaging they're damaging our, 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 our ability to connect with the sun which is life giving it's damaging the air we breathe the water we drink the food we eat the crops and so the website to go and learn more is executivereasoning.com forward slash global march. And that will give you all the information you need to contact your own local um, um, uh, police chief and their deputies to bring this to their attention. And the only way this is going to happen is the only way we're going to get positive results is if we pull together. Our voices are strongest when counted together. And we need more, more, more people. So... Um, as we're saying in this video, if you have a loved one that has a, a badge and, and, a, and a gun, we need their support. We need their ear. We need them to see what's going on and to take corrective, peaceful action. Yeah, and one of the actions that we would like to see, because we it's pretty much a given now that we are being sprayed. There's billions of photos online. Uh, there's maybe even billions of videos online of spray on, off, etc. And so now the way to stop this, in our opinion, is we must ask police officers, anyone with a gun and a badge, to do an inside job, so to speak, and never allow any chemtrail chemicals to enter any airport ever, anywhere. doesn't matter if it's a military base or not. Because if the military is doing this to us, then we got to stop them. Uh, of course, they're going to say they're not doing this. So, therefore, they should not have a problem of inspection of anything going into their air base. So, we need 
the reason why we're contacting you, the family members and friends of peoples with guns and badges, is because we need you to realize that, you know, me and you, uh, you know, and I'm, not th I'm talking about the friends and family of police officers that are not officers. If, I know, we know many of you are concerned, and I know that if you have a brother or a sister in the force, and if I was a friend with you and you wanted to stop it, you and I would never be able to survive being in front of a delivery gate of an airport and question deliveries going into an airport. You and I would not be able to hop a fence to stop a sprayer from taking off. We would get shot. So this is why we want to talk to you, the friends and family of police officers and all other officers with guns and badges, um, that, you know, the the only solution here is for the people with the guns and badges to act at common law to never allow a chemical that could be used for spraying into any airport anywhere ever and to make sure that not one plane that's loaded with any of these kinds of chemicals gets to take off anywhere ever. Okay, And the only people that can do it is your loved one. We need you to know that it's your loved one because right now there's a move afoot. Uh, common law, the idea of common law is growing. And so what's going to happen is that your loved one may be uh, called, called out in a common law court. And it's not going to be a statutory court like, you know, the ones that they are used to. It's going to be a common law court of the people. And so... These are crimes against humanity. When you spray the public or you spray populations of, with chemicals and you don't do anything about it, according to the War Crimes, uh, crimes Against Humanity Act, an omission also makes you just as criminal uh, in a crime against humanity as those that are actually doing it. So your loved one who is maybe failing to act, who has failed to act right now, Many have failed to act, uh, yet we know some are really against this and are scared to act. And so we don't fault them, but we're going to fault them now if they don't act and band together and talk to each other and, and, and set up ways of discovering what's going into airports and making sure no chemtrail sprayers ever leave the ground. And the only people that can do that is with a gun and a badge and acting at common law. And I'll, uh, I'll even prove to you that they can act at common law because if you read the Police Services Act of Ontario, Section 42, Subsection 3, it basically states that a police officer can act as a constable at common law. So that means every, any and all police officers can act at common law. And that would be to investigate what's going into every airport and to ensure that not one sprayer takes off. And there's just only a couple of ways to figure out if there's sprayers taken off or not. And that's to make sure that every plane is checked to make sure that there's no chemicals on board and to make sure that no chemicals enter any airport, period. Whether it's through an underground pipeline, through any kind of underground tunnels, or through the regular delivery gates. I would now, just like to add that... Um under common law, you're innocent until proven guilty. And the bottom line is the evidence is undeniable that we are being sprayed like bugs and that we're being sprayed with poisonous chemicals. Um, and under uh, most governments, all governments operate under Roman law. And under Roman law, our traditional justice system, um, you are guilty until proven innocent. So the bottom line is there is no doubt that this is going on, and so it's up to us to come together to stop it and to do it peacefully. Right. And so we, we depend on our police to protect us against forces of criminality and evil. The police are a foundation of our society. And by the police not acting to protect us from chemtrails, they have thrown us all under the bus. And they, this has been done already, and I'm going to play some audio a little bit later to kind of show you, you know, people have been asked if they're on meds, if they're seeing a shrink, or to tell you to put tinfoil on your windows or on your head when you, whenever you report chemtrails. So um, the, we're the family members of police officers, the family members of military, uh, we need you to know that your loved one can do something. No one else can do anything because I'm going to show you with other audio here that uh, there's no one that's gonna that there's no one that's able to take the complaints about chemtrails or, or or contrails. There's no one. 
Okay, so we need to talk to you to encourage your family member because your family member is our only hope right now. We need you to we need you to talk amongst yourselves, other family members who are not police officers. We need to reach you because your family member is key to the survival of what's going on. And let's talk about photosynthesis and um, and vitamin D production in the skin. You need sunlight, period. Without the sun, we are all done. That may sound cliche, but it's true. Photosynthesis is required for vitamin D production in the skin. Have you noticed the number of days where there's been no clear blue sky and sun? You don't even have five days in a row anymore. And that's impossible to get when you have a high pressure zone unless there's chemicals being sprayed. And also with plants, you need the sunlight for the plants to take out carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and use that with sunlight to convert the carbon dioxide into sugar, plus release oxygen to clean the earth. So, th ever notice that many of the, um, the the vegetables you're eating are less sweet? It's because the sun is being blocked. And so, again, family members, friends of police officers, we need to reach you. We need whoever's listening to this video send this video directly to a, a, a friend or a family member of a police officer or a military service person. And we are asking you to protect the public at common law and to stop the spraying. And the, the only ways that we can just quickly think of that, and that is to prevent deliveries of chemtrail chemicals to airports, every airport, I don't care what kind of airport, and also to make sure that sprayers, meaning a, a plane loaded with chemtrail chemicals, is not taking off. And we also need to pay a special attention to satellites in orbit because those are the probably the instruments that are turning on and off remotely because the pilots are unaware of this, uh, of, uh, of the on-off if their planes are spraying. And so I'm going to give you some ideas now as to where to look on an aircraft if you um, <clears throat> want to make sure there's no uh, chemicals on board. Uh, number one, <clears throat> pay attention to the center wing tank. It's been it's been put out there that uh, the center wing tank has been made unusable because of maybe a faked uh, bad check valve uh, on the minimum equipment list. So if, you've, uh, if you're aware of a plane that has been given uh, clearance to fly, but it has uh, um, uh, a minimum equipment list deficiency of something to do with the center wing tank, then the center wing tank could very, have, very well have been loaded with chemtrail chemicals that is uh, loaded into the center wing gas tank and that, that gas tank will not be used. The fuel pumps will be shut off so that there's no fuel coming, uh, anything coming from the center wing tank. But the contents of the center wing tank could be released from nozzles somewhere else on the plane and turned on and off remotely by satellites. Now, uh, where could those nozzles be? The nozzles could be on the pylon. They're called pylon drains. But if you look on many aircraft, you'll see that the pylons have modified skins. In other words, it's like a car getting a brand new bumper but not painted. And so it stands out like a sore thumb. You'll see very many nozzle areas on these pylons having that characteristic of uh, modification. The other way that chemicals can be put on board is through the unit load devices or those baggage containers. Um, some of them are modified with special hookups and uh, pr uh, we've, been, we've been made to understand that the, you, these things are heavy. Probably the uh, aluminum oxide or so is in a methanol slurry in these big containers. And uh, then, you know, the, the, the baggage people, they, they just do their job. They read what's going on with this container, this Envirotainer or that tainer. Uh, and then they just do the hookups and they're just doing their jobs. And so, you know, again, you know, there could be tons of chemicals loaded into the baggage compartment through the ULDs or the modified ULDs. And then uh, at, at cruising altitude or wherever, uh, the satellites very likely turn on and off the sprayers that could again very likely come from the pylon drains. Now, <clears throat> so th those are areas of concern. Now also, um, <clears throat> there are other people saying that, you know, chemicals could be entered into by the people who take care of the toilet systems, okay? I don't have a lot of information on that. 
it could be true. Uh, however, that's another area where uh, police, we require police to act at common law uh, to inspect another, that area of the plane too. So um, police, we need you to act at common law to make sure no chemicals enter uh, an airport, to make sure no chemicals enter a plane that could be released for spraying. Uh, we need this stopped today. And so, again, if you're a family member or a friend or if you know a police officer or a military officer, please do not send this video to the, the cop. We want to reach the friends and families of the, the, these people with guns and badges. Okay? We need to get you to see that your loved one is key in this and we need you to understand what's going on yes you know your paycheck is going to depend on this but let me tell you something if we reach all of the friends and families of police officers and other military officers so if we reach them first you, your 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 family member police officer won't be out of a job and if you are you'll have a bunch of people helping to relocate and uh, and help with uh, income and and other issues that may occur so we are, again, we're, we want to talk to people who are friends and families of uh, people with guns and badges. We need to reach you. You need to look up in the sky. We need you to look up in the sky. It's not normal, this lack of sun. They do have something to say. There's a, a quote that I would like to share with our listeners. Um, just give me one second here to find it. And it's very, it's totally related to what we're talking about now. Um, and uh, it's, it's by um, Van Gogh. And what he basically says is, until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back. Concerning all acts of initiative, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans. The moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves to. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issues from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance which no man could have dreamed that would come his way. Whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. So when he talks about, you know, the material assistance, that's what we were just saying earlier, or what you were just saying earlier about how, you know, we fear for our jobs and our income, and yet somehow the universe contrives to take care of us. It's, um, and basically what we're talking about here is making decisions that are for the highest good of the greater all. We're, not, we're just talking about our children, ourselves, you know, our, the food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe every single day. And there's ample, ample evidence. Go out and take some fresh snow and, and find a university lab or some lab that will test it for you and find out what's really being delivered. I mean, they're talking about aluminum, barium, strontium. I mean, other chemicals that are not healthy for us or for the animals or for the plants that we eat and, and, and rely on. So that's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So thanks for the opportunity to discuss this with you. And once again, I also encourage you to make sure that this information gets spread far and wide and worldwide because it's happening everywhere, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long. Mm -hmm. And it's a slow process. You know, it, I had a, a cousin who just died of Alzheimer's. They're saying one in three, al one in three uh, seniors will get Alzheimer's as a result of the spraying that's going on in the skies. So I had a, um, a, a beautiful friend here over the holidays who's suffering from a respiratory uh, illness. And I said to her, you know, have you considered that it's, it's from the air you breathe, the chemtrails, the chemicals that are being sprayed? And the incidence of, of respiratory diseases is really on the rise. So is cancer, you know. And, and so the bottom line is, is it's a slow, it's called, it's called a silent weapon in a quiet war against humanity, which is basically uh, to reduce the population. I mean, that's the ultimate goal of the toxic leadership. Um, that's a game, the end game they're playing now. And the, the end game means that, you know, all the corruption and all the pain and suffering that's going on can no longer continue. Right. And so basically, you know, we need to reach the friends, family, etc. of uh, 
people with guns and badges. So if you have a friend that has a gun and a badge or a family member that has a gun and a badge and they do that for a living, please send this video to them. We need the awareness because we need to we need everybody to understand that going to the police on the street has gotten us nowhere. We've been ridiculed. Going to uh, different other places uh, have gotten us nowhere. Uh, going to the EPA or environmentals have gotten us nowhere. We've been ridiculed. So no, no, nothing is working. There's no one. But the only people on this earth that can actually do the work to stop this are people with guns and badges. And it's your loved one and it's your friend that can stop this. They can act at common law. And we need to reach you, to tell you that in your circle is our solution and your solution too. In your circle is your solution, our solution, and humanity's solution. Because this is a crime against humanity. Blocking the sun, blocking photosynthesis for plants and algae, blocking vitamin D production in the skin uh, is an inhumane act on a population, on a civilian population, never mind any population, it's an inhumane act. And these are crimes. And by police not acting, and others not acting, you, the, you're, they are accomplices in this crime. And also, most people don't fully understand photosynthesis or the, the necessity of uh, ultraviolet UV light, UVB, for vitamin D production in the skin. People just think that we're like robots and we don't need sun. It's not the case. It's going to it's going to hit us really hard. It, it already it already has. How many people are vitamin D deficient? Did you look at the plants and look at the trees? You see how many trees are now cut down and they've even taken their stumps out? Yeah. I would like to add another point um, that just came to me. And um, it has to do with um, human beings who are playing God right now. And what we're setting ourselves up for is a possible extinction level event. I mean, we are messing with the Earth's atmosphere that um, and stratosphere that we have no right to mess with. So just put that in the back of your mind because the bottom line is we need to do something now while we still can because if this continues as it is, it could escalate to an extinction level event and then we all lose. Mm -hmm. And the power is, is within us to make this better for everyone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just to kind of add a little bit more, um, if, if you've heard about the polar vortex, what I urge you to do is uh, go look on YouTube and you might find some original video uh, that's, that the original first few people have made on the topic explaining how the jet stream is stopped and manipulated up towards Alaska, basically melting Alaska. And then the jet stream comes down through the center of North America causing this polar vortex. Well, it's because they were chemtrail spraying the heck out off the California coast and using harp to hold the, the, the front stationary so that the jet stream does not go across the continent, but rather up to Alaska, melting all the snow and probably melting the ice cap, probably because they want to get the oil underneath the water. That's right. Or, or to open the shipping lanes. And also, and also, that's what caused the drought in California. And California is the breadbasket of America. There are many fruits and vegetables that come to Canada from um, California that will not be available. And also the cattle, they couldn't, they didn't have water to feed the cattle. So um, farmers have abandoned growing um, cattle for food consumption. Mm -hmm. And that might not be such a bad thing after all, when you consider how inhumane some of those animals are treated, mm -hmm. you know, before they reach our table. Yeah. And so now, you know, you're going to you, you may say, well, you know, the system is so big, the system is so corrupt, how do you stop it? Well, stop the chemical deliveries at the airports and stop a sprayer from taking off. Those are the fundamental ways to stop this. So we, we we're, again, we're trying to reach the friends and family of police officers and of other uh, officers that have a gun and a badge. Um, and also know, too, that the central banks are going to have to change because uh, the central banks basically are the money printers for the top people of the world. So what we need to do is we need to take back the central bank system so that uh, the central bank is owned by the people, for the people, living people, not corporations. And so therefore the central bank ought to be used for supplying money to the public 
living people, not corporations. And so this is another way that we can sustain ourselves. So if, if the central bank is printing money, it, the military doesn't get it anymore first. Uh, people get it first. And okay, why don't we save that for another video? Okay, sure. It's a very important topic, and mm -hmm. it's all interrelated, whether it's money, whether it's chemtrails, whether it's, you know, um, GMO food, whether it's um, fluoride in the drinking water, they're all interconnected, and they're all part of, of a bigger, of a bigger um, agenda that we are, many people are aware of, and that we, when we come together, you know, and, and focus in our hearts, so that it's for the greater good of all. We need to we need to shift this trajectory away from you know harm to harmlessness. Right. And okay. So I think this is great. Thank you so much for sharing all of your technical information and uh, raising the awareness so that we can come together as one species, mm -hmm. one family, and um, and um, yeah, I just want to save our save our save our soul. Yeah, save I just our lives. I just want to add that. Um, people are activating common law courts everywhere now. They're coming up more and more. So police officers who have failed to act and therefore are potential crime against humanity um, uh, persons, uh, you will not be tried in a regular court system that you're familiar with that you will be safe in. You will be tried in a common law court where you're not safe because you have a badge. Okay? Nuremberg trials. Nuremberg trials are coming for the chemtrails, and it'll be through a common law medium, very likely. So that's why we need to reach friends and family of police officers and others who have a gun and a badge for work. And airports are not secure. They're, they're, they're only secure from us seeing what's going on. We need now reports uh, of all the chemicals in an airport and what kind of um, activity that they're, are they loaded for spraying? We need people in airports now to divulge everything what's going on inside an airport. Having said that, please share this with friends and families of people who go to work with a gun and a badge, whether that's a police officer, state trooper, RCMP, FBI, etc. And uh, share this also to heads of states' families. Don't give it to the heads of states share it with their families because they're, f they're family members who, who are the head of a state may be protected in a statutory court but they won't be protected in a common law court and this is where we are trying to reach everybody to reach the family members who have the ability to make the change stop the spraying stop the deliveries stop the takeoffs of sprayers and the only people who can do this are people with guns and badges acting at common law. Okay, thank you. I'll leave you with that. Thank you. The airplanes are flying in formation. They're creating grids, triangles, X's that are forming into gigantic plumes and it is not dissipating. Oh. Isn't that, uh, we don't usually take reports of the uh, airplane uh, material coming. Definitely. Well, this is obviously a chemical release into the atmosphere from the airplanes. Whatever chemical it is, I don't know. Uh, for, yeah, for, they, call, they call them chemtrails, but they're not something that we, that we take reports on. They call them what? Chemical trails. Uh, That's what some people call them, but we don't take reports for them. Okay, so who takes reports for chemical trails? I don't think anybody does because they're just condensation. That is the EPA stance on it. Without doing any research as to the aircraft that I'm speaking of, without looking up what airplanes I'm talking about, you can definitively tell me that these are condensation trails? How is that possible? Hi, my name's Linda. Yeah. I'm calling from Chief Glenda Care's office. You left a voicemail for him. I did, yeah. Can I ask what it's regarding? It's the lines in the sky oh. from, from airplanes. Oh, okay. Lines in the sky. And what are they from? Air airplanes. You know what I heard helps? What? Tin foil on your windows. What? Tin foil 
on your windows. Really? Truly. I have heard by a bunch of people that that helps. How does that help? Uh, that I don't know. It's a little too technical for me. Tin foil on your window? Yeah, to cover them up. Like even your car window? Well, no, because you need to look out of those to drive. But your home, 